this year. So as you know, I'm always reviewing, looking for the best, and uh, comparing and contrasting between different sorts of product categories and modalities. Um, I also do special discounts on what I find to be some of the best out there when I do come across something good. So this is a infrared sauna dome, and as you have heard on other infrared sauna videos I talk about here on my website or my YouTube channel, um, the thing that I like about infrared dome design in general is, across any brand for that matter, um, is the fact that when you lay in here, as you can see, your entire body pretty much is exposed to infrared from all sides, 360 degrees. Um, and also inside the dome, your body is right on top of infrared. So in terms of the mat, you're right on top of it. So you're getting direct exposure. And then inside the dome itself, you have emitters that line it. And those are also very close to your body. So comparing a dome, for example, that design to a uh, infrared sauna, a cabin, wood cabin, uh, you basically get a lot more exposure of infrared. It's faster, more efficient at raising your core body temperature. And you also get more blood flow because 70% of your microvessels are in your legs. You get more blood flow going back into your upper portion of your body, your core organs, things like that. It has an easier time getting charged up with infrared and then circulating upwards and having a lot of benefits as it goes up into the rest of your body versus sitting sitting in a traditional style sort of infrared cabin, something like that. Um, so you'll see below in the video here, my link to this company. If you did want to place an order, my link is below. If you want a special price, you just have to contact me directly and I would send you an invoice. Let's get into this device itself or this brand. Um, as you will note, compared to a lot of other domes out there, it is a fantastic price um, on average almost a thousand less than some other competitors, uh, 600, 800, 700. It's a good discount less than your average one. Let's get into uh, some of the specs of this because as you look at portable saunas in general, um, most of them are toxic in one way or another, whether that's electromagnetically or material wise. So that is something to always closely look into when you're looking into portable saunas. Uh, and the reason you want to look closer into that is because it's heating up. So you want to watch out for materials that off-gas when they heat up, electrical components, things like that. And because your body is also close to electrical components, um, the electrical fields, or EMF, electrosmog, is also something to pay a little bit closer attention to. Okay. Um, so let's just scroll down. I'm going to also show you some third, some third-party testing reports as well, by the way, um, in this video. So you can get this size, by the way, they also offer an, an extra large size, which is unique. Um, they are the only company that offer a extra large size, uh, which is good because actually this can be a little bit small or hard to get into for some people. If they're bigger, they're taller, they're wider, whatever. Um, so I like that. They have a uh, additional sort of feature there. Um, yeah, the EMF is super low and I'm going to show you those tests in a second here. Uh, so no worries on that, on the ELF or the magnetic. Um, and uh, this can go up to 6'2", if that's your height. Um, and the extra large goes up to 6'6", which is super tall, which is great. And uh, let's scroll down here a little further. It comes apart very easily, by the way. You can stack it, super easy. Lightweight as well, very portable. It's not just the stones, by the way, just if you're wondering. <laughs> Um, it, there is also like a more like traditional carbon emitters. You can't really see it here, but um, so there are additional emitters behind the stones. So the stones are on top of the uh, emitters, the carbon emitters, just so you know. Okay. And you can, you can read a little bit more about why they're using stones and things like that. Between the models, uh, there's another one that has a different uh, type of amount of stones and different minerals and things like that, just so you know. Uh, now, the one nice thing I like about this brand or some others is the uh, infrared mat that you lay on is very intense. It's uh, more like the infrared mat standalone products that are out there, uh, like a Healthy Line or a Medicrystal or a um, Biomat, of course, very common company. So all these kind of like standalone infrared mats, they usually put out a lot of infrared. 
and this one in this dome setup is like that. Um, so there's a very high amount of infrared that comes off of it. So when you look at like other dome styles out there, uh, generally how these other companies do it is uh, it does offer some infrared, of course, on your backside or depending if you're lying on your stomach or whatnot, but the mats are, are generally just to kind of help you maintain, um, you know, some core body uh, raising of, of, of heat. Uh, but I wouldn't call them necessarily like intense, like a standalone one. So they don't generate a huge amount of infrared. Also, um, a couple of the other options out there, um, they have more like a um, cushion or a topper on top of their infrared mats for comfort. But that does obstruct a little bit of the infrared coming through some of the infrared rays. So in the case of uh, like this one, um, they do not have that. So you're just getting like real direct ray exposure, a larger amount, as I said. So um, <clears throat> one other very unique thing is the max temperature that this particular brand gets to. Um, and it's also unique actually just out of any infrared sauna in the industry. So most cabins get up to, like wooden cabins, get up to 130, 140 degrees. Uh, there's a couple, uh, technically, that get to like 159, 160 uh, it's just so, but there's only a couple that really do that. Most is about 140. And then when you get into like portable saunas, uh, those also are uh, like pretty much about the same. Some of them actually struggle to get up to a very high temp. You might get like 120 and then others get up to 140. Uh, but this one is by far the highest. And I personally believe it's, uh, can get so high specifically because they're matte puts out a, uh, a lot of infrared. And I think that is the big difference. Because if you get into like what their carbon emitters are that they use in the dome portion, they're not like um, special high wattage carbon emitters. They're just your kind of classic, traditional, normal wattage emitters. The watt density, infrared output is normal or similar to other carbon saunas. So I actually believe it's the mat that's making the difference. Um, to get it so high, and that's like crazy high <laughs> compared to uh, any other infrared sauna out there. Uh, now, I won't, don't recommend like using that all the time, or especially if you're new, new to infrared saunas, uh, but it's nice uh, to be able to do a more intense session sometimes, kind of mix it up a little bit. I recommend people usually mix it up in terms of uh, settings. Uh, and also the other nice thing is because of, especially the mat piece, it does warm up about the fastest of uh, any infrared, portable infrared sauna, or actually of any infrared sauna. Uh, let me think about that for a second. Uh, yeah, it's actually similar to uh, ceramic rod, actually, which, which not really ceramic rod. I'd call them, they're technically more like tube ink alloy heaters, tube or tube uh, rod heaters. Those saunas do are pretty fast, um, but this is actually a little faster, obviously because it's tiny by comparison to a full traditional sauna, so you don't have as much uh, indoor air temp uh, to warm. So you can pop into this thing pretty fast. Nice, obviously, here is they put the ELF, right, the electrical force uh, on the EMF testing. Uh, most portable saunas do not tell you that information. So you go scrolling through YouTube videos, <laughs> trying to find somebody um, that has used a voltmeter, right? And uh, sometimes you find it, sometimes you don't. Uh, I've tested almost every sauna, the ELF levels as well. But basically, that's super low. So they're usually recommending like below 100, I believe it was, according to some international standards. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is regardless... I think just about the lowest, one of the lowest, maybe the, the lowest. There's actually a sauna company in Canada, uh, traditional uh, cabin style, that actually I've tested that is lower than that. Just FYI, if you're curious, reach out to me directly. I'll let you know what that is. Um, do you need to look into something like crazy super low like that? Um, realistically, in my opinion, only if you're like really electrosensitive or electro hypersensitive, um, then that can be, this can be fantastic, you know, really great to have something like that or something that even lower. Uh, but most people don't fall into that category. They're just like obsessively worried <laughs> about EMF levels. Uh, the infrared sauna industry has like uh, exaggerated it a little bit 
Um, there are some saunas that are quite high, not many in my, in, from what I've found, but some are very high. And, um, you know, but again, there's not too many of them really. And uh, for the most part, I'm not that concerned. I am very concerned about electrosmog in general, but usually from other exposure sources, not saunas per se. There's other things that are much worse cumulatively that people experience in their modern lifestyle. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really too concerned in general about saunas and the, and the short exposure time that people get, not to mention they're getting other benefits in a sauna that actually helps your body to become more resilient to electrosmog. So there's that. Um, as you can see also, a fantastic amount of certifications. This is all the stuff that you'd want to see, uh, ideally on a portable sauna. Um, most portable sauna companies don't even list that. A couple do, um, but it's very, very few. Um, they just don't, companies don't even go after those because <laughs> it costs money to do it basically. And a lot of times you have to renew it on an annual basis. And uh, a lot of this you want to get into, so some companies they'll get into the electrosmog thing, they'll make a big, big di whole deal about it. Um, and they make such a big deal about it because they don't want you asking questions about the materials and thinking about that. But with any inference on a cabin, wood cabin, and any portable, you should always be asking questions and looking into the materials. It's extremely important. And it's basically barely talked about for the most part in the industry. Um, in the inference sauna industry, they do talk about, if there is something con commonly talked about, it's usually more like glues, this whole thing about like toxic glues. And of course, the funny thing about it is that that's actually not really a helpful talking point because almost every manufacturer and sauna uses wood-based uh, sorry, water-based, non-toxic glues. So like carpenter's glue, um, like uh, again, wood, like water-based, like it's similar to Elmer's glue, a little more, you know, a little more robust, nothing to be concerned about, something you could probably eat and have no problem with. And the reason most of the factories use that is because it's the cheapest, <laughs> of course. So um, that's the good news. The bad news for like traditional saunas with a with the exception of a handful of brands, is that almost all of them use other things in the sauna that can off-gas that are concerning. Certain electrical components and commonly plywood in the floor and the ceiling. And plywood generally is treated with different chemicals to make it and uh, to cure it. And if you heat that up and then you cool it down, you heat it up and you cool it down, especially with infrared, you know, over years and years and years, it's, uh, you know, God only knows. Um, what, what could be happening in terms of off-gassing inside the cabin and inside the room in your home that it's in. So if you're curious about saunas that don't use uh, some of those bad materials and have the right certifications, uh, message me. I have connections with who those are. There's not many brands that fall into that category. Why? Because it costs extra money to build a sauna that's clean. That's why most companies don't do it. They're, they're trying to give the best margin possible. Anyways, let's look at some third party, third party things here. All right, so first thing is there is silicone in portable saunas, some of them. Um, and so this uh, report here, and I will email this to anybody. Um, and that's SGS, common company that does a lot of chemical certification. Okay, uh, for many different many different companies, including sauna products, what whatnot. Um, yeah. So in this one, they're just talking about it's really boring. <laughs> they're talking about the silicone that was tested, um, and a lot of these common things you can find in silicone-like compounds in general. Uh, and they're just letting you know that it's like super clean. It's basically more like surgical sort of silicone. Um, you know, if you ingested this, it was sitting around in your body, it's going to be fine. And um, so, yeah, um, this is a report that generally uh, companies don't want to send you, um, but this company does. Um, this is for the, uh, is it the polyvinyl? Um, let's see if we can zoom in here. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. Um, it's on the leather, okay? So that's the uh, material that's used on the exterior domed portion. So it's not it's not real leather, <laughs> um, but it is uh, artificial leather. And 
it's, uh, there's certainly a lot of toxic artificial leather out there in the uh, furniture industry and whatnot. This is a non-toxic one, so um, you can look at what those tests are about. Super boring, um, but these is super crucial stuff to look at if you're going to be heating up a material over and over and over and over again. So again, most portable saunas, they do not want to show you this information. A couple will, but uh, you know, the other 95% uh, will not. So what is this one? Um, this one we're looking at the aluminum sheet. Try, I can't remember where the aluminum is. Um, I think it's inside the structure itself. Um, it might be in the mat too for the EMF. Anyways, um, yeah, aluminum, you wouldn't think it, but aluminum is not just 100% aluminum. <laughs> there are other sorts of metals and things that can be in that and also how they treat the metal itself. So it's another thing to look into, especially if a metal is um, exposed to any kind of moisture, potentially, things like that, you just gotta watch out. And then here's the EMF tests on like every emitter and distance and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so it's pretty thorough, you know, something nice. Uh, here's the average on the magnetic. Um, I think the ELF is not in this one, but anyways. So that's that, um, and then the last thing I will tell you is that um, the material grade on this portable is the best out of the industry, and the reason I say that is because there are a couple other portables out there, and the material grade is perfectly safe and super high quality. Um, this one has the most robust material, though, because they decided to use materials that could also handle ozone, okay? Ozone gas. Ozone is O3. It's got an extra atom of oxygen on it. So instead of O2, oxygen, um, it's got O3, okay? Just if you didn't know that, you can Google ozone, O-Z-O-N-E. That's a therapy. They use it as a therapeutic way for all kinds of things. Been around a long, long time. Anyways, um, so they decided to make ozone, if you don't know, is very oxidative. It destroys all kinds of things, bacteria, you name it. It basically breaks it down. It's very corrosive and oxidative. And it will pretty much like break down all kinds, all kinds of materials. So there's not a lot of materials out there that can handle ozone. So any materials that can handle ozone are probably not going to be off-gassing. In other words, they can withstand something highly corrosive and oxidative. Um, and uh, to your body, it's uh, it's not bad for you. Like when the ozone gas, when you're sweating, it mixes with the water on the outside of your pores and then basically breaks down to a similar compound of perox peroxidase, um, like hydrogen peroxide, right? So it breaks down to another oxidative compound, and then that's what your body will absorb through the pores. And you can actually use that to help oxygenate as it gets into your bloodstream. Uh, you can use that to help oxygenate your body, okay? So there are some other um, modalities out there like steam, ozone cabins, hockets, and other cool equipment you can always ask me about that use like combined steam or just sweating and ozone. So they decided to make this safe. So if you wanted to get a separate ozone generator and pump the gas inside of this thing while you're laying down in it, uh, you can do that. And you can do two modalities in one. Do they sell that equipment? No. Um, if you want a discount or a connection to get an ozone equipment, I can refer you that information. Uh, and just if you're curious, you got to get an oxygen concentrator with the generator. It's basically going to run you close to like fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars if you wanted to add on something like that to this, just out of your own curiosity. Um, that's what about what it would cost you um, to add it in, okay? On top of this, but you'd have to order it from a separate company just to just to make that clear. But that, I thought that was pretty cool, um, making it able to withstand ozone. It's unique. There was one other dome some years ago this practitioner made uh, that could withstand ozone. Um, I don't know if she still sells it. It was much more costly than this one, and it was hard to get. I think it was not always in stock. And again, I'm not even sure if she still sells it anymore. So I think this may be the only 
portable out there currently that can handle ozone, uh, which is awesome. You know, I'm, I'm way into oxidative therapy, so I know about all kinds of different oxygen-based modalities. So if you have any questions about products, supplements, equipment, devices that are into that sort of thing, just reach out to me. Um, I do think they are a good adjunct complementary modality to infrared sauna. They are very synergistic. And I do specialize in consulting on how you stack different modalities together to get overall a better therapeutic outcome and reach your health goals or your clients or your patients. So um, do I like this sauna? Absolutely. Um, I am a big fan of just again domes in general because they can raise your core body temperature so quickly and efficiently and uh, you don't have to spend as long in the infrared sauna. You can also do more intense sessions with these as well. Also, this one, I, last thing I just noticed, by the way, the skirt on this, the skirt is also unique. You see that flap right there? So it's unique in that you can actually fold that down. And then what that does is that lets no airflow. You can heat up the inside faster than other portables that do not have that flap. So that is another unique feature um, of this one. And it's a little tighter around the neck. Um, so if you do have ozone in here, um, you know, you'll be less likely to breathe that ozone in, which is not really ideal to get into your lungs, just so you know. That's also why a lot of ionizers in room for room purification, if it's not the right kind of ionizer, it can actually uh, affect your lungs negatively, significantly in the long run. So just watch out. There's a lot of purification for air, air and I have an expertise in that area as well, of course. Um, that can do more harm than good. But that is for another conversation and another video where I compare and I research every purification technology on the market. So um, if you have any questions about this brand, you want a special deal on it, whatever it is, uh, you can reach out on my email below in the video. You can check out my website, which is still in a uh, conversion process. I have a lot of videos down right now which is frustrating a lot of people. So if you are missing or looking for specific review information, connections, quotes, whatever, just directly reach out to me, send me a quick message, and I'd be happy to help you in any way that I can. Thanks.